What's up guys and welcome back to the channel and in today's video I'm going to be talking about UFC fighters in every division that I used to like and now I don't really like them as much as I used to. Now look these are going to be varying cases some of them I'm going to be like I completely hate this person now some of them I'm just going to be like yeah you know I don't like them as much as I used to it's varying it's going to differ it's going to differ between divisions so this does not mean like I loved this fight I was a massive fan of them I was rooting for them to win every fight now I hate all of them. Some of them are just like, I like them, now I kind of don't. Some of them were, I really like them, now I, I don't know, I just don't really care about them. So yeah, I'll talk about each one. You guys let me know yours in the comments as well. Which fighters did you used to like and you now don't like? But yeah, let's get into the video. Starting off with the flyweight division. Now this is an example of how I said some of them are different cases. I'd, I'm a big fan of Manel Cap. I, I'm, rooting him from, I'm rooting for him to beat Mikhaev. But he used to be like my favorite flyweight without a doubt. I would have been rooting for him against anyone, one of my favorite fighters, and now he's just not there for me anymore. Now, I like him, I think he's still a really fun fighter, he's still based, of course, um, we still love, you know, his post-fight interviews, but uh, the yapping has just gotten a little bit annoying, this guy missed weight against Nicolau, and then started saying like, oh, this was the only time I've ever missed weight, all the other times my fights got cancelled were because of my opponents. Um, just like Yappen, and then also pulled out of the rematch with Nicolau, um, and then said like, again, all the other times my fights have been cancelled was my opponents, this is the first time I've pulled out, just was yapping, he was getting a bit annoying, um, you know, maybe, I don't want to say it, but he did convert to a different religion, or maybe that, you know, lowered the baseness, that increased the pullout level in terms of pulling out of fights, missing weight, obviously, you know, there's a bit of a graph here. And Manel Cap, weight misses and pullouts, they were at zero. And then you hit a point where he did, in fact, you know, I'm not going to say it, but he, he converted to a religion that, you know, is famous for producing fighters that pull out of fights and miss weight. That's uh, I'll leave it at that. Um, but, yeah, Manel Cap, he's gotten a little bit annoying. He hasn't talked much recently, though. We haven't seen him since September. That was, like, the peak of Manel Cap when he delivered that epic post-fight interview. And since then... The stock has just not risen at all. He's been booked for fights. He pulled out. He missed weight. He's now booked against Mikhaev. Hopefully, he wins. I'm still rooting for him to beat Mikhaev because, uh, unlike Manel Cap, I've just never liked Mikhaev and I hate him more than ever. Um, but I'm still rooting for Cap. But he needs to make weight. He needs to quit yapping about random shit and just get in the cage, lock in, and deliver a win, and deliver another great post-fight interview, and then it will be back in the good books. Uh, but let's move on to the bantamweight division. So for bantamweight, this is another one where I don't feel too strongly about it in terms of, but this is the reverse, because ne this one with Cheeto Vera, that, the, that's the pick, it's Cheeto Vera, you can see on the fucking screen. Um, look, I never like loved him, Poor, that sounds weird, Like I never was like a massive fan of Cheeto Vera, but you know he was a sick fighter, Like he was... I, I was I would watch Cheeto Vera fights and be like, damn, but this guy's sick. He might actually win a belt. I'm a pretty big fan of this guy. This guy's got a cool fighting style. And he's still got the cool fighting style. But now, you know, the excuses after the O'Malley fight was not it. Bro was saying that O'Malley was greasing his hair. Um, motherfucker, you didn't even engage in the clinch. What are you talking about? Also, uh, this guy's fighting style went from, oh my god, this is really cool, this guy's just KOing everyone, to just pissing me off, because this guy is not talented, and I've kind of picked that up now, because, you know, he KO'd Frankie Edgar, I was like, damn, but that was sick, um, and then I forget who he fought, I think it was the font fight after that, I assume, maybe he fought someone else, but like, the font fight was cool as well, just beat font up, but that was where I started to be like, damn, bro, this guy's kind of fluking shit a little bit, like, he's just getting random knockdowns occasionally to win fights, um, which is just... Oh, I was like, eh, okay. Then he fights Cruz, literally losing to Dominic Cruz, gets the head kick, lands some follow-up shots that I thought were unnecessary. You know, I'm not going to complain about that. Then, you know, fights Corey Sanhagen, gets whooped, still yapping to Corey Sanhagen and shit. I don't know why. Fights Munoz, gets a title shot under... The Munoz fight was whatever, it was mid. Um, gets an undeserved title shot, looked shit in the fight, did fuck all didn't just walk forward, he literally let O'Malley use him as a fucking punching bag for five rounds, yapped after the fight, making excuses, saying that he would have won if there was no time limit, saying that O'Malley was, like, greasing his hair on some shit, saying, like, did you feel that body shot at the end of the fifth round? Like, yeah, sure, buddy, you had 25 minutes to land that and finish him, you could only land one decent shot in the last 10 seconds when O'Malley literally willingly engaged with you. Um, so yeah, the excuses have not been it. I'm hoping uh, I'm hoping Figueredo beats him as well. I don't even love Figueredo that much either. Like, he's not even one of my favorite fighters, but I just hope he whoops 
uh, whoops Vera, and we don't just see this unskilled power and chin merchant just somehow be a top five bantamweight. Like, I always say bantamweight and lightweight. They're the best two divisions. I'm like, bro, I'm sorry, but if you've got a guy, like, with heavyweight, you can be a power merchant. Like, Ngannou, bit of a power merchant. You know, some of these guys, bit of, like, they just get away with having power and they win. But, like, at bantamweight, in an actually skilled weight class, it's just pissing me off that this dude, who's clearly not that good, is just a top five fighter because he's got a chin and he can't get KO'd and because he's got some power. Like, it's fucking pissing me off. So, Cheeto Vera is now one of my least favorite fighters. Um, Look, he was never one of my favorites, but he was a guy that I was like, I would always be happy to watch. I was always a fan to watch his fights. But now I'm like, I can't stand this dude. He's just pissing me off. Uh, Let's move on, though, to the featherweight division. Next up, featherweight division, Ilya Taporia. I used to be a big fan of this guy. This guy was like, oh my God, this guy's sick. This dude's fighting style is awesome. This guy just whooped Bryce Mitchell, just 50-44, Josh Emmett. This dude's sick. And then I kind of realized, fuck, he's going to fight Volk. And I don't want him to beat Volk because I like Volk more than him. But like, I was such a fan of his fighting style. He was cool. He had mad aura. Still does, obviously. Like, he was just living that, like, he was living that life, you know. He was a cool guy. Um, he just seemed like a badass dude. And now he's just pissing me off. And yeah, it's kind of because he beat Volk. Like, that doesn't help. He beat my, one of my favorite fighters, probably my, like, equal favorite fighter, him and Oliveira. Um, and that pissed me off. So I was like, all right, fuck you. The buildup was annoying. Fair play, backed it up. It pisses me off because I wanted him to get fucking humbled. Um, and now this dude is literally writing thank you messages to himself on Instagram. Like, we're actually cooked. This dude's not going to lose to, like, anyone because I'm sorry. He's going to beat Holloway. He just is. Um, maybe Lopez can beat him. Uh, but if he beats Lopez, uh, and he, if he beats Holloway and he beats Lopez, then I'm going to fucking hate this dude. Because, <laughs> like, there's a difference between, like, damn, like, okay, damn, this dude's really good. I just got to respect it, which I do. And then also being like, fuck, I hope this cunt gets chinned. Um, so, yeah, Ilya Taporia, this guy pisses me off. Um, great fighter. It's not like, it's not like his fighting's boring or his fighting style annoys me or anything like that. It's just his personality. This dude is fucking egotistical as shit. I mean, you would be if you were 15 and 0 and the world champion, but guy pisses me off. He's writing thank you letters to himself. He's like, I would like to thank the person responsible for my success. Like, fuck off. Also, what's with this guy's obsession with roses? Piss off. Um, yeah, Ilya Zaporo just annoying me beyond belief. Uh, let's move on to the lightweight division. Bro, lightweight's a weird one. I'm going to go with Armin Sukin, right? And I was never like that big of a fan of Armin, but I just looked through. I didn't want to do some unranked guy because I'm like, can't be fucked. And I was just looking through the lightweight rankings and I'm like, I never really liked Islam. Like, he's a great, great fighter. I never like, was a fan of him. You know, Oliveira I still like. Gaethje, Poirier, Chandler, like these guys I never really felt super strongly about. I always just liked watching them fight. Like, Dariush, I was never that big on, Gamrot, like, I don't know, there was, no, I looked at the rankings, and there was no one, I was like, oh, maybe Fazeev, I don't really care about him anymore, um, but no, I guess I'll go with Armin, because after the Gamrot fight, I was on the, like, bro, he got robbed, this dude's really cool, I was like, this wrestling, this guy's wrestling is sick, then he fought Demir's Magulov, fight was a little bit stinky, I was like, yeah, all right, fair enough, um, then he fights Joachim Silva, um, lose, no, not loses, he wins, but he, like, he got rocked, I was like, yeah, this dude's just like kind of mid at this point. I like, it's more like I got less high on his skills. And then this guy's, then he beat, um, Benil Dayush. The Bobby Green situation pissed me off. He was just being a cunt then. Uh, beats Benil, even though I picked him, I felt kind of bad for Benil. Um, and then in the Oliveira fight, he wins. Like he's not really done anything wrong. This guy's just slowly started to piss me off and I just don't really like him. Look, I was never a massive Armand fan, but I don't know, this guy's personality just kind of annoys me. Seems like a bit of a dickhead. Um, <laughs> kind of happy he got suspended, not going to lie. But, okay, I'm not I'm not happy that he got suspended, but also, it's kind of funny. Um, anyway, let's move on to the welterweight division. That's not one I feel, like, strongly about, to be honest. Let's move on, though, to the welterweight division. Welterweight. I'm going to go with Joaquin Buckley. Now, this is probably, like, the most short-lived, like, the most quick change of opinions I've ever had on a fighter. Because after the Luke fight, I was like, yeah, I mean, cool, good win. You know, he had a decent inter- post-fight interview, um, beat up Luke, you know, MMA guru raged, which was funny. Um, you know, then he made, he actually made himself a bit of a personality. Like he went to the 300 press conference. I thought that was funny. Got the Ruzabov fight. I was rooting from heavy against Ruzabov, picked him. I watched that fight live, um, live com- fight companion. We were all rooting for him, all cheering. I was cheering for him to beat this motherfucker up. I'm like, beat this in, but up, um, and I was all happy with it. And I was like, great job, Buckley. This dude's actually pretty cool. Like, he's actually a pretty cool fighter for the welterweight division. Then, calls out Connor. 
negative 1,000 aura. Um, I don't know what this dude's doing calling out Connor. It was just cringe. Then these the next couple days and weeks after the fight, he just managed to say so much annoying, dumb shit. Like, this dude's saying that GSP is not that good. He would beat GSP. Randomly going at Cub Swanson. Randomly going at DC and other people and shit. Like, bro, don't get butt hurt because people said your call out was terrible. It was terrible. Straight up, it was an awful call out. Um, See, so yeah, this dude was just yapping, getting too defensive, randomly just calling out people for the sake of it. Look, I don't hate Buckley. He's just a bit of an. He's a bit annoying. He's just yapping. I don't hate him, but I was like, damn, this dude's actually becoming like not like one of my favorite fighters, but like a dude that I'm gonna be rooting for against most guys at welterweight. And now I'm just like, okay, yeah, this guy don't really care. I'm like, bro, just to be honest, just shut up. Um, so yeah, he just yapped. He this took about all of two weeks for me to go from damn Buckley's actually a pretty cool dude. I like him to. Yeah, this guy's fucking annoying. Like, shut up. Uh, so, yeah, let's move on to the, well, the middleweight division. Now, this is another one that I don't feel super strongly about. I put him in the thumbnail because it's the most likely to get views out of all of this. Like, if I put fucking Armin Sukin on the thumbnail, no one's going to care. So, I put Strickland on here. Um, look, out of everyone at middleweight, this is the dude because like for, to fit this category for me because, obviously, I never liked Izzy. I'm no, I've never been, like, a crazy Drickers fan. My opinions on him haven't really changed. Like, Cannoneer, Vittori... Costa, these guys, I've never really changed my opinions on them, Costa I never really liked, and now I like him even less, um, like Delidzi, I always kind of found annoying, so yeah, for, in terms of, there weren't actually that many other contenders, to be honest, um, and Sean Strickland, look, we, we all, like, he's still based, he still says funny shit, he's still a good personality to have in the division, but this dude went from, like, apex media conference like legend most based shit you will ever hear we all loved it it was funny as fuck to then he kind of got put in front of too many cameras and too many podcasts and too many like well-known people and now he's kind of gone mainstream he's gone into like this like he's trying to now overly appeal to like the new like right wing like Trump audience that he's now got as fans. Um, a lot of random cunts that just came along because they heard all the shit that in the for the Drickus card when he said that shit to the reporter, which was funny as fuck. But then some brainless fans came along and decided that they were hardcore fans of the sport. That also kind of just annoyed me. Um, look, fair play. The Drickus fight was sick. It was one of the best fights of the year so far. Um, it was great. And I didn't have an issue with him coping about it a little bit. Like, I don't... Look, I'll call people out for coping. Um, and I was like, okay, he's kind of coping. But, like, saying you think you won a fight that it was close and a split decision, that's not coping. That's just like, yeah, you thought you won a close fight. But, like, saying, like, I was whooping his ass until I got cut. Like, eh, I mean, not really. Um, and then also, like, Costa fight, build up again. The for you, fu- for you fucking guys. And then goes out there and... F- f- 50-45's point fests, does a whole lot of nothing, doing a whole lot of, like, flamingo stance kind of bullshit. Um, then he just yapping, saying, I'm waiting for the title shot, I've done my dues, I deserve it. Like, yeah, but that was the case until Whitaker went out there and smoked Ikram and now has a better, like, a, not a better in terms of quality, but a more impressive win than you. Like, Costa ain't all that. Whitaker also beat Costa, did it in more exciting fashion than you. Not quite as one-sided, but more exciting. Um, and he's just acting like he's just the most deserving number one contender to ever exist. And look, I don't have an issue with him saying I should get a title shot, but don't be like, not nah, waiting, not doing it. Because that is why I hate Colby. Because Colby started doing that and acting entitled. And now that's what Strickland's starting to do. It's pissing me off. So hopefully, you know, because he has taken short notice fights. He has stepped up, has saved the like the day before, which is sick. We respect him. He is definitely a BMF in terms of taking fights a lot of the time. But now, like he he was willing to fight Hamza on um on 294. He was willing to fight Hamza on 294 when Costa pulled out. He was willing to step in and defend his belt a month later. Like dude's crazy. Um, but yeah, he started to just get a little bit annoying. The shtick just got a little bit annoying. The white trash constantly every second fucking word that he said gets it a little bit annoying. And yeah, now he's acting like he's not, he's saying he's not fighting Whitaker, he's waiting for a title shot. Even if people deserve it, I hate you saying I'm waiting for a title shot. Just don't say anything. Just be like, nah, man, I don't really want to fight that guy. Um, or just be like, I think I deserve a title shot. If, it, if I really have to, I mean, I'll fight this guy. But like Whitaker has, is coming off two wins as well. You're coming off one. Obviously Whitaker lost to Drickers more dominantly than you, but don't be acting like you just 100% 
fully deserve the next title shot and you're not going to fight anyone. It's just getting a bit annoying. So yeah, Sean Strickland starting to yap a little bit too much. Start the shtick. The Twitter fingers are coming out a little bit too much. Stick. Oh, they need to send this guy. We need a Sean Strickland reset. We need to send this guy back to the Apex for a fight night main event against fucking Brendan Allen in a rematch. He can whoop his ass, call him soy, say some funny shit on the press conference, not have... Like, this dude's around too many famous people now. It's turned bad. He's starting to get, like... It was funny when it was just crazy retard Sean Strickland in the Apex, in the Apex just chatting shit. And, like, the hardcore fans knew, like, the semi-casual fans knew, but there weren't just, like... He wasn't, like, a top 10 name in the sport. Now, he created a fan base for himself, which was awesome. I loved that he whooped Izzy's ass. That was amazing. That fight build-up, that fight week was incredible. Um, but since then, he's just started yapping too much. The Dricker situation, crying on the podcast, not the best look. So, yeah, I still like Sean Strickland. I'm still rooting for him to beat most guys at middleweight. That's mostly because I just don't like anyone at middleweight. Uh, so, yeah, Sean Strickland needs to get back on track, hit a factory reset on that man, send him back to the apex, Get another, like, Mac Life viral 20-minute interview where he just, just fucking says the most dumb shit ever. And, yeah, we need to get back to base Sean Strickland and not just yapping on Twitter. Uh, let's move on, though, to the light heavyweight division. Now, this is also one I don't feel that strongly about in terms of the before. The after, I feel very strongly about because I hate Jamal Hill. He's one of the most annoying fighters on the roster right now. But after this dude beat Glover... He was low-key one of my favorite light heavyweights. I was like, bro, that was a sick fucking performance. Fair play. I picked Glover. You proved me wrong. That was a sick performance. Felt good for the dude. He went on Helwani. You know, Helwani did his worm tactics. That whole situation was cool. Uh, he seemed like a pretty based guy. You know, he seemed like a cool dude. But I guess I just didn't... I wasn't like a super hardcore fan of the sport back when he was, you know, beating like... like I still watched the fights, but like the Johnny Walker fight, um, the Santos fight. Like I wasn't super, super into the UFC then. Like... Every card I'm rooting for someone, every card I'm just across all the fighters. Like, that wasn't me when that fight happened. So maybe he was a, still a bit of a yapper, still a bit of just an annoying cunt before that. But since the Pereira fight, he has just been the most irritating person to ever exist. Since the injury, to be honest, I get it. You're pissed off. You got injured. You lost your belt. That sucks. That, like, that sucks. But then he's, like, going every fucking second UFC card, saying the champs here, I'm winning the belt back. And then, like, when... um. When Pereira beat Yuri, he's like in the crowd going, I don't give a fuck, man. And he's looking in the crowd, acting like not impressed. Just like, he's just fucking annoying. Pereira build up, talk your shit. But then you got to fucking own it afterwards. He didn't own it afterwards. He yapped. He was calling out fans for memeing him. Like, bro, you set yourself up for all of this. And he just can't take a fucking, he can't take criticism. He is just yapping on Twitter every two fucking seconds. Someone literally complimented him. And he somehow said, he took it as an insult. Like, this dude's ridiculous. Um, so, yeah, Jamal Hill, one of my least favorite fighters right now. After last year against Glover, actually used to be a guy that I wasn't... Like, I actually kind of liked him. So, yeah, Jamal Hill, quit yapping. Let's move on, though, to the heavyweight division. Heavyweight, he was also on the thumbnail, Sergei Pavlovich. Uh, Sergei Pavlovich, I used to... This dude was literally one of my, like, top, like, 10, top 5 favorite fighters. I loved this dude. He was sick. He was, one, like, one of the coolest fighters to watch. This dude just swings lunch boxes. He was just K on fat men. You know, he posted that thing on Twitter, which was funny as fuck. Based, Pavlovich, NATO's worst nightmare, 260 pounds of white power, all of that. The whole meme, everyone loved Sergey. He was just, like, the fridge. He was just the fridge. He was the meme of the, like, community. He was, like, one of the best things in the heavyweight division. And then, um, you know, loses to Aspinall. No big deal. He lost to Aspinall. Aspinall is best in the world right now. Um, but then the Volkov fight, he's just lost his aura now. And that's kind of why, like, this dude, I liked him because of his aura. I liked him because he would just go in there and just KO everyone. And it was just sick. He would go in there, finish you in a minute, pause, and then, you know, p go play the fucking slots and just chill. That was Pavlovich. And now, Volkov fight, I get it. Frustrating situation. You're fighting your friend. You lost. You got beaten up. But yeah, he just really didn't look all that good in the Volkov fight. Pushed him afterwards, a bit salty. Even his message on Instagram after the fight, a little bit salty. A little bit, like, lacking congratulations to Volkov and more like, yeah, I wasn't feeling, like, good. I was frustrated. I couldn't land my shots, all of that. So yeah, Pavlovich, um, I still like him, to be honest. Like, he's still a sick fighter. I'm still rooting for him to just go KO some fat man. But he's no longer, like, one of my top favorite fighters. Like, he's no longer just some dude that's just... I want to watch fight all the time. And I'm just like, but I'm rooting for this guy to beat everyone. But anyway, that is the video done, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Like, subscribe, leave a comment, follow my Instagram, left lane MMA. 
And yeah, let me know in the comments who, if you disagree or agree, whatever. And yeah, peace out, guys. See you in the next one.